Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here in the lovely world of raccoons with me, Vanilla Raccoon. Heyo! And I just want to take a moment to thank you all for your ongoing strong support. Admittedly, I was a little worried when I had first announced that I was going to be stepping back from the main channel to focus on my second channel along with just getting my life together, so to speak. I was a little worried that people would hear that and think that I was indirectly saying that I'm done with YouTube or I'm going to begin to slowly fade away, which is not the case. But nevertheless, I just want to take this moment to say thank you all for your strong support. And with that being said, let's just jump into this episode. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working over here in the sheeple area. Oops, I already had stuff on me. And as you can tell, we have quite a lot of stuff on my person. So let's just go ahead and begin to set up camp. What I want to do is smelt down the stack of cactus that we have right here into green cactus dye so then we can fuse it with our lapis to get scion day scion dye not day and i've decided in this episode we're gonna attempt to get two sheep heads one being the light blue sheep head and the other being the scion sheep head however if we only get one then that's fine by me at least we can say we tried to acquire two sheep heads in one single episode much like what we did in the previous one but as I go ahead and begin to recolor the sheep, I want to... Oh, apparently I ran out of dye. So, <laughs> as I continue to work on recoloring the sheep, what we're going to be doing in this episode is we're going to create a little wheat field around the area. And we're also going to do some landscaping and shape up this area because... In between recording this episode and the previous one, I couldn't help but think that maybe, just maybe, we should establish a proper wheat field. So then, one, we can have an adequate amount of wheat to use that we can make. Excuse me, I'm trying to get out of here now. Excuse me. So that we can have an adequate amount of wheat to use to make bread with or to create hay bale ball bales just to make storing the wheat a little more easier for us. And also then as I continue to walk around this area, I couldn't help but shake the idea that maybe, just maybe, we can make this look a little more pretty than it already does. Now considering the fact that we do have a swamp biome right at the edge of this area, that could be a little problematic, but nevertheless, as you know, I can take on any problem. Or, well, I guess I should rephrase that in saying that I like to take on any and all problems that I can, but if I'm unable to overcome them, then at least I can say I try. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to work on a layout for how I want the wheat field to look in this area, and then when I bring it back, I'll share with you all a bit of a progress update. Well, some progress has been made, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we got going over here now. For starters, I took some bone meal and laced the ground with it so that we could encourage the grass to grow just a little bit faster than it normally would. And then wherever we had a stray flower pop up, I would just go ahead and take it and then place it in a pot and then give it a new home for it to sit at. And then I would, in its place, dig two blocks straight down and at the bottom of the hole, I would place a jack-o'-lantern so then we have a little bit of light within this area. And then in the second block space, just near the surface, I took a bucket of water and then placed it down. That way then we could begin to take our diamond hoe and then tilt the soil so we could then begin to grow our wheat. And we also have some pumpkin seeds that are growing. Actually, this one is starting to grow. That one, I think he's taking a sweet old time, but that's okay. The one good thing about farming is it's a way to test your patience. And if you're not so much of a patient person, then well, I guess you'll learn one way or another. But then just to mark off where the wheat field is going to be at, I placed down some spruce fence posts just as you see here. However, I think I'm probably going to fill in the spaces in between with either option A, nothing but spruce fence posts, option B, a mixture of spruce fence posts along with spruce fence gates, or option C, I'll probably fill in the space with a variation of posts and fence gates. Actually, you know what, now that I think about it, I'm gonna, uh, let's go ahead and create a poll for this. Through the power of YouTube cards, one will be appearing in the top right corner of your screen, 
right now and you can cast your vote to help me decide how we're going to fill up the spaces in between the spruce fence posts that we already have pre-existing here. I'll be sure to check the votes before I begin to record the next episode so that way then if we have any votes that have been casted and whichever one seems to be winning at that time is the one that I'll go with. So once again, through the power of YouTube cards, a poll will be appearing in the top right corner of your screen if it hasn't done so already where you can vote and help me decide as to how I want to finish off the rustic fence that we have going along here. Now some of you may be wondering why we have these two stone blocks stacked on top of one another. Well, this is where I'm going to be placing down a few statues. Now, the stone blocks themselves are not going to be the statues. They're just a visual indicator so I know where it is that I want to place a statue at. And all I did was as I continued to run around the area here, planting down wheat and then various other seeds, along with taking my bone mill and lacing the ground with it, I started to get a feel for where exactly I wanted the statue to be at so then it could sit there nice and proud and not become an eyesore as time passes. But at this point now, I'm, gonna get just, I'm just going to continue to work around here and then probably begin the work on the next project that I want to for this episode. So with that all being said, I'll be right back with ya. Well, here we are back in a glass case of emotion. And you may be able to tell in the background that we have a few things going on. First, we have a few more scion dyed sheeple than we did in the previous segment. Second, we have a few more Moomoo's lingering around within the Moomoo Moo pasture. And lastly, our long-faced friends have been relocated so that they're no longer by themselves and they're just a little bit closer to the bovine herd. Yeah, I went fancy on you calling the Moomoo's Moo bovine their scientific name. And also, we have our wheat field for the most part fully established. Now, I think only once or twice having completed the wheat field have I only actually harvested all of it and I want to say that I gathered at the least two maybe two and a half stacks of wheat but at this point in time I can't really remember what the ideal number was so we'll leave it at that however this glass case of emotion is no longer going to do it for me for where I want to just AFK at when I'm waiting to repopulate the Moomoo's and the Sheeple along with waiting for the seeds to grow up and mature in the wheat. So that's why I went ahead and created a Zorb Orb. Now on my second monitor here, I do have something that I can read off to use to let you know exactly what Zorbing is or to refresh your memory for those of you who can't recall what it is but you have heard of it. So Zorbing is the recreation or sport of rolling downhill inside an orb, generally made of transparent plastic. Zorbing is generally performed on a gentle slope but can also be done on a level surface in pubs and clubs around the UK, permitting more rider control. In the absence of hills, some operators have constructed inflatable wooden or metal ramps. Zorbing is something that I would eventually down the line like to do in real life, but at least for now, I'll just use something called my imagination to take care of that. So let's just say maybe we'll take this out on the lake and just do some zorbing whilst we wait for our seeds to grow up and mature in the wheat or to repopulate the moomoos and the sheep hill. But the reason why we have this part particular color scheme going on is because in my discord server I had asked for some help with this project. Now. I did not state that I was create I did not state what it is that I was creating. I just said, "Hey, I'm working on a small project and I would like some help and it whoever, you know, throws ideas at me and whoever's idea I pick and run with, I'll provide credit." So, Link had proposed two ideas. The first one was blue, white, and gray, and the second was dark gray, magenta, and aqua. Now, Dark Grey, Magenta, and Aqua is an interesting color palette to work with with this resource pack, so I decided to fiddle around with the first idea that Link had provided, which is Blue, White, and Grey. 
Now much like the second idea and with that color palette, gray is an interesting color to, to work with in this resource pack. So I decided to swap it out with black stained glass. And for the most part, I think this looks pretty interesting. You can tell ever so slightly where the black stained glass has been placed at. And aside from using my imagination and taking my Zorb Orb out on the lake here to do some AFKing, the black stained glass is going to act as where maybe our Zorb Orb is going to get a little dirty from when we roll it onto the lake and back onto land so if you're able to tell where it is then good for you but if you're not then all you gotta do let's go ahead and re-enter theater mode so we have a clean screen is you just gotta squint your eyes and then you'll be able to make out the black stained glass to the surrounding blue stained glass and the white stained glass now, in the event that I have my render distance set a little lower than I normally do for whatever reason, and the iron golem farm over here is not loaded, I do plan on creating a second Zorb orb that is much closer to it. I may build it in this space over here, or I may build it over here. I'm not entirely sure yet, but I want it to be fairly close to our iron golem farm just to play it safe so that we have these chunks loaded up. And for the second Zorb Orb, I'm going to go with a color scheme that was provided by JSwift12 in my Discord server. Jace had suggested light blue, dark blue, and white. Now in this resource pack, I think the colors that I would most likely use would be light blue, cyan, and white, or maybe cyan, blue, and white. I don't know. I'll have to see if how the original color palette works and then go from there if I have to tweak anything. But I think for now at least that's going to do it for this minor progress update. I'm going to go ahead and begin to get my build on, smelt down some sand into glass and grab the appropriate dyes and then when I bring it back we'll most likely conclude this episode. Well, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, it is just about that time where we must begin to say farewell to one another. But before we go ahead and do so, let's just take a moment to look at the second Zorb Orb that we have right here. The reason why I decided to build it over here is so that one, it's opposite of the first Zorb Orb that is on the other side of the hill. And then two, if I want to use my imagination and take this bad boy out on the riverbed right here so that I'm relatively close to the Iron Golem farm, then I can go ahead and do so. Also, considering the fact that the first Zor Zorb Orb is surrounded by wheat, I thought I would go ahead and utilize this area so that I can set up a more proper pumpkin and watermelon farm that will surround this particular Zorb Orb. Now what I want to do before we actually conclude this episode is I would like to just take this time to talk with you about some changes to the channel that you're going to see uh, that are going to begin to happen fairly soon and some of these changes have already been put in place or are beginning to be put in place. So for starters this Minecraft Let's Play series, World of Raccoons Season 2, is going to be the only Minecraft Let's Play series that I'm going to have here on the channel. I'm officially taking my Division modded SMP Let's Play series and discontinuing it entirely. And then I'm taking my Lake Laogai SMP series Let's Play series and I'm just putting it on the shelf for at least right now. To give you a bit of a look as to what's going on behind the scenes with Lake Leo Guy, uh, all I'm gonna say is keep calm and wait for the lake. And so, aside from that, I'm gonna continue to produce my Halo 5 and Titanfall 2 montages, highlights, and other types of non-Minecraft content for you to enjoy. So that way then, if and when I begin to feel a little burnt out or a little tired of Minecraft for the moment, then I'll at least have something else that I can fall back on. And at least it's something that I relatively enjoy creating content of. Then let's just talk about live streams for a moment. So I would like to begin to live stream at least twice a week. 
over at mixer.com forward slash vanilla raccoon one of the two live streams per week will be minecraft and then the other will be either halo 5 guardians or titanfall 2 over on the xbox one now if you have either one of those games if not both for the xbox one then just remember that you are always oops hold on you are always more than welcome to come join me in playing some halo 5 guardians or titanfall 2 during the live streams it's the least that i can do to show my appreciation for you who tune into the live streams or tune into the live streams and enjoy the videos that i upload here for you on youtube but at this point now, I think that's going to do it. Like I said at the beginning of this episode, I wanted to acquire two different sheep heads. And surprisingly enough, we managed to acquire the Scion sheep head a lot quicker than I had anticipated. So let's go ahead and actually grab the light blue and Scion sheep head and just put it in our chest right here. Originally, when I first spawned into this world, I said that I was going to keep my bonus chest right where it was. I wasn't going to move it or anything like that. So this is where it's this is where it sits at. And I couldn't really think up of what I wanted to place in it until I went ahead and downloaded and installed Exuma's more head drops add-on to this game. So I decided, you know what, we're going to fill up this chest with all the mob heads that we acquire. Let's go ahead and actually remove those tools right there. And I'm also going to be placing them going from left to right in the order in which I acquired them. So that's one reason why we have cow, squid, donkey, spider, and then for now at least we have sheep. But that's going to do it for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. As always, if you enjoyed it, then be sure to leave a like. And if you are new to the channel, then I invite you to check out the rest of it. But don't forget to turn on notifications when subscribing. That way you will then be notified when future Minecraft and other gameplay content is uploaded from yours truly, Vanilla Raccoon. But I would like to wish you all a happy day, and peace out.